All right, guys, it's Philip, it's Toon Tactics TV, and this is our series on Newcastle's transfer strategy. Now, we are trying to um, calculate, we're trying to guess, we're going to try to see exactly what Newcastle's transfer strategy this year is going to be. And we're going to break it up into three parts to help us to be as comprehensive as we can be. So the first part is going to be the owners and the finances. And that's what we're going to discuss in this series. Um, we're not going to go too deep into that because I'm not a financial expert, but we're going to take a clip from uh, 442 uh, uh, last year where they predicted what Newcastle were going to spend uh, in, in last year's summer. And, and, and we're going to uh, uh, use that method and 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 explain what it probably is going to happen this year's summer spending as well. The second series we're going to be looking at, well, in order to spend and to sell, we need a really good director of football. So who's likely to be the director of football? What's the relationship that's going to be with um, Eddie Howe? And how is that director of football? And how is it going to impact um, our sales, our, our bringing in of players? What kind of director of football are we going to need to make that happen? And the third and final part is the players and positions, the priority positions themselves and the priority targets that Newcastle are likely to go for in this, in this, in this summer. And what players are they, they going to sell as well? And how much in terms of value, how much money are they, are they going to try and recruit in order to make that happen? That's, is it going to be one player for... Uh, 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 to to break a certain target in terms of sell is going to be a volume of players. What's likely to happen? So, as we said in today's series, we're going to be looking at the owners and finance. We're going to look at four four two. What their prediction was for Newcastle's last year summer spend, and uh, we're going to talk about how how that panned out, and we're going to integrate it into today's into into what it is today. So let me bring that up. I almost forgot to bring bring it up. I would have been watching it by myself. All right, so you guys should be able to see that. Let's play. But what can they actually spend this season? Newcastle, as mentioned, would have been looking at around a £50 million transfer kitty. The £25 million shirt sponsorship with Saudi organisation Seller. Well, remember last year we had a £25 million sponsorship deal with, with, with Seller that increased our ability to, 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 to sell. This year, we have the Adidas deal that's waiting in the pipeline. Hopefully, that will come out before the summer uh, uh, transfer period as well. So uh, that's going to add to our transfer kitty as well. Still puts them some way short of the £40 million commanded by their rivals for the same thing, but is still a huge leap on from the £6 million Fund 88 were paying for that exact position. Coincidentally, the Asian betting firm are staying on as a commercial partner, adding them to the growing list of new business ventures that will be able to swell their spending. <laughs> Guys, we've gone from £6 million Fund 88 to £25 million with, with Seller, and hopefully even more money with Adidas. And we're, and our, comp our main rivals, whether it's Tottenham, Arsenal, Liverpool, are already 40 million pound up so you can see how important it is for our owners to be financially competitive with our fellow premier league rivals further this would likely take them at a conservative estimate into the 70 to 80 million pound bracket possibly even beyond but this growth in revenue combined with the increased competition money from champions league qualification Right. So last year, the, the expectation is that we're going to have obviously extra money from the Champions League. This year, it's very, very, very unlikely we're going to get into the Champions League. I'm not going to get into the Champions League. The most we can hope for is the Europa League or the Europa Conference League. And that money is totally different. To, it's totally different, way less different uh, to what the Champions League money is. So again, that's going to impact our transfer kitty will put them firmly over the £100 million mark this summer in terms of what's available. Without player sales adding to this fund and with the club likely to keep some in reserve in case any major surgery is needed in January, they're unlikely to have broken that £100 million barrier by the time the window closes on September the 1st. However, given their previous history of going after their top targets and not being afraid to push right up to the limits of what FFP will allow, it's equally possible that they could surpass last summer's £120 million if they feel the market is right for it. Right, so 442 did a very uh, educated guess as to what Newcastle were going to spend. They felt that it, it, the Newcastle were likely to push, uh, spend between 80 to 100 million uh, in, oh, my phone's gone off, 
Newcastle were likely to spend between 80 to 100 million um, before player sales. But if the Newcastle owners had, and let me put myself on the big screen again. However, if the right player became available, Newcastle owners were would, would definitely go for them and were not afraid to break that 100 million pound uh, uh, bracket and maybe equal the total uh, spend last year, which was the year before that, which was 120 million pound bracket, which is very, very interesting. What actually happened in the in, in um, last year's transfer for Newcastle United, we ended up spending 153 million pound on players, but we made 44 million pounds on player sales. So the total spend was 108 million. So 442 were very, very accurate in terms of what they worked out for Newcastle's spend. But they looked at uh, the fact, obviously, the revenue from Seller. We've got um, Adidas. Um, uh, this year, they looked at um, the, the Champions League money, which we're not going to have this year. We, we might not even get into Europe this year. So that's, that's the other thing. And the fact that, obviously, the 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 revenue that we got last year, uh, our total revenue was around 180 million. This year, our total revenue is 250 million, a 39% increase. So uh, it swings and roundabouts. No Champions League, but an increase in terms of uh, revenue itself. The other thing, though, is important to remember is that our total costs or our uh, running costs last year was uh, in terms of uh, minus running running costs was 70 million we were 70 million pounds in deficit this year as you guys would have seen were 78 million pound in deficit so it's rising so yes the the revenues rising but so is our costs so when i look at this year what newcastle are likely to spend i think newcastle will spend the same in terms of uh, players are, are likely to spend the same because everything is sort of balanced itself out that we're likely to spend between 100 to 150 million and that's because of the increase in revenue and uh, but also um uh, and so the costs have also gone up and the costs are likely to go up with the better players that we get we can't and the hope is that uh, uh but the new but newcastle owners will continue to balance the books. They've been very clever in terms of how they get the sponsorship deals, like I mentioned. And so I think Newcastle are going to spend between 100 and 150 million, uh, the same as they, as they did last year, and they'll continue to slowly build up the squad. I do think, though, also that they are going to increase the, the amount of players in terms of value they're going to, uh, they're going to sell because our costs have gone up, wages have gone up. And um, the total cost for the club deficit has gone up to 78 million. So I think we're going to try and break that 44 million pound in player sales last year. And we're probably going to look in between 50 million pound plus. So does that mean they sell the one player uh, to make up that deficit? Or do they sell a number of players uh, in order to, to, to break that uh, uh, million pound bracket? And obviously, uh, 44 million pound bracket, we'll have to wait and see. That's going to have an effect when we when we go forward in terms of um, and when we look at players that we're going to buy and players that we're going to likely to sell, which is in the third and final series of this tra transfer strategy. But in order to bring in players, in order to sell players efficiently and well and at a good cost and to beat our rivals, we need a director of football in order to do that. And in the next series, we're going to look at who is that director of football likely to be? We all know there's a number of uh, people that have come up in the in the in, in the in the news recently. I've also got a, an episode. Uh, uh, guys, check it out on, on the likely director of football in Newcastle. We're going to look for. So we need a director of football, and that director of football is going to have to be good at bringing players in and selling players as well. It's got to be in his forte, or is it directors of football plural? Could, be, could there be two? Could those roles be split? We'll have a look at that. And what's the relationship with Eddie Howe going to be? And how are they going to build that squad together? That's what we're going to be asking ourselves, especially in the third and final series. But in the second series, we're looking at the director of football, as I mentioned. We're going to look at his impact as well. So as I've said, in conclusion, I think we're going to spend between 100 and 150 million pounds in this transfer window. I think we're going to sell more than 50, 50 million pound worth of players. Uh, as well, or player, and that's going to have an impact in our transfer window. And we're going to have the, need the right director of football in order to do that. Until next time, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and God bless, guys.